We are still in the COVID-19 pandemic, and we are likely going to be in the pandemic indefinitely. So I'm Lee Hampton. I'm a senior specialist on the Gavi vaccine programs team. But in reality, I'm a medical neologist and pediatrician who's very focused on disease surveillance, vaccine safety, and diagnostic testing to make sure that our vaccine safety support programs work as safely and effectively as possible. My take is that in term, from a straight sense of are we going to return to the situation we had before the COVID-19 pandemic started? We're, we're not going to. And by that line of reasoning, the, we're still in the COVID pandemic and we're likely to be in it for the indefinite future. There's a lot of diseases that we've been living with for thousands of years, and it's not a pleasant experience, but we do it. Um, so tuberculosis, measles um, are great examples. I, so I think that we're similar situation with COVID where we don't really have much of a choice, but we do have it within our power to try to make it easier to live with COVID and to try to minimize the damage that it causes. And that's part of the reason why continued efforts to use measures we know are effective in preventing or mitigating the harm from COVID, like vaccines, is so important. Two other examples where we're still in pandemics that started decades ago. We've actually been in the current cholera pandemic since the 1960s. Um, and we talk a lot about the HIV global epidemic. Well, a global epidemic is a pandemic. So we've basically been in the HIV pandemic for at least 40 years. So I think that you know, we're kind of moving into a similar situation with COVID that we've seen with diseases like cholera and HIV, which we didn't have before, or at least in their current forms, but they're now you know, around circulating and they're going to be with us indefinitely. Fundamentally, some the key principles for managing and preventing disease outbreaks, mitigating the harm they cause, is to try to prevent the outbreaks from happening in the first place. But if they do happen, to try to detect them as quickly as possible and then respond to them and contain them as quickly as possible. So your success with each of those measures determines what you're going to do with the subsequent stages. So for example, for some epidemic prone diseases like measles, we actually have very, very good preventive tools already in place. So the best way to prevent measles outbreaks is to just vaccinate everybody and give them immunity so that you can't have measles outbreaks. The best way to manage the, the COVID-19 pandemic going forward, from my perspective, would be to try to make sure that we can do regular immunization, um, including for adults, uh, with uh, annual updates if necessary or frequent updates to the vaccine. So in an absolute best case scenario, if we could take the kind of immunization programs we have against seasonal influenza in high income countries, and set up something similar globally where we're vaccinating against both influenza and COVID-19 on a regular basis, and then we change the vaccines as necessary as the viruses change, that would be great. At the same time, we also know that other measures um, against COVID-19, other respiratory viruses make a big difference. One of the big learning points for a lot of countries when dealing with COVID-19 has been how effective face masks can be in preventing the spread of respiratory diseases. So in the first winter after the COVID-19 pandemic started, Measures like masks were used so widely that in the United States, we didn't have a flu season that year. That's never happened before. So if people could you know, incorporate use things like uh, face masks and other non-pharmaceutical interventions, at least partially, into their daily routines, at least part of the year with their highest risk for respiratory diseases, that would be great. Globally, Thanks to the COVID-19 experience, we are somewhat better prepared for dealing with future pandemics than we were before, if only because there are a lot of people who've now had the experience of how to deal with the pandemic of an unknown disease. However, I think it's gonna be critical in our efforts going forward that we don't just plan on trying to fight the last pandemic, that the next pandemic will be different from the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we need to make sure that our planning is flexible enough and covers a wide enough range of contingencies that whatever the next pandemic is, that we are in a good position to detect and respond to it.